All right, y'all. I know that you have been asking Mr. Brown and I for weeks now, what is an orthographic drawing? Well, today is the day we are going to learn about what orthographic drawings are as well as how we create them. So today you are going to want your ruler. You're also gonna want your calipers. I'm gonna use mine in this example video. Please note, um, I'll show you where you should place your calipers. We're not gonna read the scale of my caliper though, because my caliper is one of the lucky ones that was printed incorrectly. So I'll show you where to put the caliper on your Legos, but you should read your caliper scale, not mine. You'll also need your Legos, your graph paper, and a pencil today. So when it comes to orthographic drawings, uh, I know that you all have seen this term in your technical drawing portfolio. And again, you've been asking us, what is this? What does this mean? So all of the drawings that we've been doing up to this point, the full scale, the reduced scale, the enlarged scale drawings, they all share something in common they show our object from one perspective. And that's just a 2D perspective. So we get two dimensions, whether it's the width and the length, the length and the depth, uh, but we only get two of them at a time, which can be great for showing us basic information. For example, if we were to draw a full scale view of this Lego right here, we draw it out as a two by two Lego, easy enough said and done. But that one perspective might leave out a lot of information. It might leave out things like the height. So our orthographic drawings are going to help us to include all of that information and communicate it to our peers as we are designing our whatever it is. So for this, we're going to do an orthographic drawing of what I'm calling Lego Tower One. Let's take a moment and construct Lego Tower One together. Go ahead and grab your two by one Lego. Remember that your two by one Lego is this little rectangle that just has the two dots on it. And you are going to stack it on top of your two by two Lego. So you're just going to stack those together so you have this simple little Lego Tower One. I'll also post pictures of this on Schoology in case you need the reference. So with our orthographic drawing of our Lego Tower One, we're gonna end up drawing three different perspectives of it. We're gonna draw what we call the front perspective or the front view. And the front view is typically gonna tell us the most information about the different twists and turns of our object. So I'm picking this as our front view because it shows us all of the different heights of the bottom part, the height of the full tower, the width of the bottom part, the width of the top part. So we get all that information in that one view. Now, Mr. Brown and I will almost always tell you what the front view of your object is going to be, so you don't usually have to figure out which one that should be. We also are going to have the top view of our object. So the top view is what we've pretty much been doing thus far with our full scale and enlarged scale. Our top view is like a bird's eye view. It's if you are Superman flying over the city or a superhuman flying over the city and you look down at all of the buildings from above, that is what you would see. And with that, you don't really see the height of the object. It just kind of gets compressed. So we are going to take a look at how to draw that. We'll also then have, in addition to our top view and our front view, we'll have our side view. And again, our side view shows us that same object, but from a different perspective. So if we were to, if we were to look at this uh, like it was something in our math class and we were to look at it on different axes, we'd know that our height would be along our y axis, our length would be along our x axis, and then this depth 
that shows us how thick this object is, that's along our z-axis. And so each of our views allows us to see two of those dimensions. So we're still not drawing this as a three-dimensional shape, but we're using a combination of perspective to show all of these axes in relation to each other. So our front view is going to show us our x and y axis. Our top view is going to show us our x, and it's also going to show us our z, which is our width. And that means that our side view over here is going to show us our z and our y. So now that we have some background information, you don't have to draw this out or write this out for every one of your orthographic drawings, but it's just some good information to know that might help you to understand where we're getting all this information from. So now let's go ahead and actually start drawing our orthographic uh, drawing of Lego Tower 1. So when we're drawing orthographics, we're going to start with the front view. I'm going to erase this just so I have a little bit more space and write it, oops, excuse me, and write it again right down here. So first thing I need to do is I need to take some measurements so that I can have the front view of my orthographic drawing. So this is where you're going to grab your caliper and let's start by taking the measurement for the full width of our Lego tower. So you're gonna take the outer jaws of your caliper and you're gonna place them around the bottom section, so the full width of your Lego tower one. Go ahead and take that reading. You can share in the chat what is the width of Lego Tower 1? And let's do this all in inches, by the way. So our width should be 5 eighths of an inch. Nicely done. So I'm going to go ahead and write these measurements down because I know that I'll want my dimensions later. So I'll write down my measurements and that will also help me when I am drawing this out. So now that I've got the width, I'll draw this line in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and get the height of it as well. Now for all of these Lego drawings, we're gonna make this easy on you. We are going to ignore the little studs of our Legos. So for all of our measurements, we are going to pretend as though those studs don't exist. So when I'm placing my caliper, you can see that I'm getting my caliper on the flat part of the Lego. I am not including the studs in my measurement. So you're gonna go ahead, again, place your caliper, the outside jaws around the outside, the top and bottom of your Lego tower. And you're gonna take that reading Go ahead and share the answer in the chat. How tall is our Lego tower? For this one, for the overall height, you should get three quarters of an inch. So with those two measurements, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing out that front view. Uh, so one thing I do want to talk about real fast is in the first uh, checkpoint of your technical drawing portfolios, one thing I saw a lot of was our drawings just kind of floating out in the middle of our graph paper. So they weren't necessarily on any of the lines. We always want to start in a corner. So at least the first two lines we draw will be on the lines of our graph paper. Uh, if you give us something that is kind of thing out in the middle of the graph paper lines, it leads me to believe that you traced your object, which remember we always want to measure and use a ruler to draw our object. So our drawings are super accurate. So we're going to go ahead and start out by doing that 5 eighths inch long line and we're starting in a corner so it will for sure be on a graph paper line. And then we're going to go ahead and make that 
three quarters of an inch tall. Again, this will for sure be on a graph paper line because we are measuring and using our ruler, our ruler to draw that nice and straight. So now we've got the first two lines. We've got the full height and the full width or the full length of our Lego tower. Now, as we can look at the rest of the outline of this, in terms of a general shape, how would you describe the shape of this Lego tower? Is it a square, a circle, a star, a rectangle? Type your answer in the chat. What general shape does that look like? Yeah, to me, it looks kind of like an L. So with this, we know that we have the full height and the full length, but it's not going to be a complete rectangle. It has some empty space right here. So we're going to need to take a couple more measurements. We can't just finish our rectangle. We're going to take a measurement that tells us how wide this part is and how tall this part is. So the how wide that should be pretty easy for us. Again, we're just going to take our caliper, those outer jaws, and we're going to close it around the outside edge of that Lego. And share your answer in the chat. How wide is that portion? It should be 5 sixteenths. And now let's go ahead and figure out how tall our Lego tower is. Again, not the full height of it. We already got that measurement, but we're going to do from right here, where my pencil is, to right here. So we're just going to measure this part. Now, since we're using our caliper, at this point, we've only used our outside jaws. And this isn't really an inside measurement, so we're not going to use our inside jaws. But our outside jaws, you can see that it's not going to be super easy for us to line them up and get an accurate reading there. So instead, this is a great time for us to use this depth stick on our caliper. So in order for us to use this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the jaws of my caliper just a little bit more. And then I'm going to take that depth stick and I'm going to put it on the part of my Lego tower that I am measuring to. And then I'm going to slowly close the jaws of my caliper until the end of my caliper is resting on the top of that Lego. And again, we're not including the studs, we're just going from the flat part of the Lego. Now when you're doing this, you do wanna make sure that you're not pushing too much. If you're pushing too much and your caliper is on an angle, it's going to give you a shorter measurement than you actually want. But you wanna make sure that you are actually pushing down uh, the whole way if you're not pushing enough and you're on this kind of an angle, then it's going to be too long of a measurement. So you want to make sure that the top of your caliper is perpendicular to the surface that it is resting on so that that little depth stick hits the next surface that you're measuring to. So again, taking a moment, take that reading, read your caliper, share your answer in the chat. How tall is just that section Yeah, that should get us three-eighths of an inch. So now with these two new measurements, I'm going to continue my drawing. So drawing that top portion of our L. So just this line straight across and this line down. One tip that I'll share when I do this, I do try to do it in smaller sections. And again, writing my measurements as I go, just to keep myself from getting confused about the overall shape and to prevent myself from getting confused as to what measurement was for which part. So using my ruler to measure things out, now we've got the top part of our little L. Now, as for the rest of our L, we still have two lines left to go. It's going to be this distance, so from here to the edge, and then the remaining height. Now, I've got two different ways that I can find out those measurements. The first way 
is for me to continue using my caliper to measure and take those readings. So if you want practice with measurement, you can again uh, use the depth stick to measure from the edge of your Lego tower to the inside of that L that we just measured. So again, using that depth stick, poking it right in there. So you can take that measurement and then the outer jaws to measure the remaining height. So that's the first way is you can continue to practice your measurement. The second way is to do a little bit of math. Since we know the whole width and we know what width we've used up so far, we can subtract one number from the other to find the remainder and that's gonna be the length of this section right here. We could guess and say that it's gonna be half, but it doesn't hurt to double check either by using our caliper and measuring or by actually doing that math. For those of us who wanna do the math, since we are subtracting fractions, we do have to do uh, some finagling with common denominators. Remember that you can't subtract fractions unless their denominators are the same. So right now I've got 5 eighths and 5 sixteenths, so I don't have the same bottom number. In order to get the same bottom number, I'm going to multiply everything in this fraction times 2. So I'm going to make it an unsimplified fraction. So 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 8 is 16. And hey, look at that. Now I've got common denominators. So when I subtract 5 sixteenths from 10 sixteenths, that leaves me with 5 sixteenths. So that's my remainder. So this section right here is in fact going to be 5 sixteenths of an inch from here to the end. Same thing for the height. I know the overall height and I know the height of this section that I've drawn so far. In order for me to figure out the remaining height, again, I can measure or I can do that math. So we had three quarters of an inch minus three eighths of an inch. Again, we need to have that common denominator. So I'm going to take all of this and multiply it by two. Nope, that does in fact equal 3 eighths. I can do common math, yeah. So now you'll see for both of these examples, I multiplied everything by two. That's just because I knew in my head that two times eight would be 16 and two times four would be eight. Is it always gonna be the number two? No, sometimes it might be the number four, sometimes it might be the number eight. You just have to figure out what you'd need to multiply this bottom number by to make it equal that bottom number. So that's a little throwback to math class and common denominators. So now that I have these two measurements, which again, it's going to be another 3 eighths of an inch for the height, another 5 sixteenths of an inch for the width, I can make those last two measurements in either order. Sorry, it would help if I actually measured two three-eighths of an inch. There we go. And there you have it. So that right there is our front view. We drew it at full scale. So it is exactly what we see there. Our Lego fits perfectly on top of it. So with our front view, we're going to do one thing and then we're going to take a quick break. The thing that we want to do is we want to clean this all up a little bit. So this is what we want when we are talking about dimensions for our orthographic drawings. Because you can see that was a lot of writing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase all of this. We're going to start kind of fresh. I'm going to erase all that too. 
If you have math off to the side, I don't mind that. But when it comes to your dimensions, we're going to start asking for very specific things. So for all of your orthographic drawings, these are the dimensions that we want to see. First of all, if it's a drawing like this, I want to know the full height of the drawing, which, like we said, was 3 quarters of an inch. Don't forget to include your units. And I also want to know the full length of it, which, like we said, was 5 eighths of an inch. So I for sure want those two drawings. Now, for us to draw this accurately, we took all of these measurements or we found them out using some math. But in our dimensions, if we were to include all of those measurements, it starts to get a little bit crowded here. Since we can do the math, and since other people that we might give this drawing to can do the math, we're going to include only the crucial measurements and let people do the math to figure out the rest of them. So you'll remember when we first drew this, we had the whole height, and then we measured this section. So I will include that which like we said was 3 eighths. And you can see that I'm putting this dimension, uh, I'm not putting it super close, you can put it closer into here, but I'm kind of lining it up with the top half. And that, hey, the top half of this section is 3 eighths of an inch. I don't need to write it again at here at the bottom half, again, because whoever I'm handing it to, they can do this math at 3 fourths minus 3 eighths equals the other 3 eighths. We don't need to include all of the dimensions if we can do the math. Same thing for the length. I had the whole length, and we had measured this one. So again, I'm putting it just over top of this section to show that this section right here is 5 sixteenths of an inch. I'm not going to include a dimension for this section because I can do that math at 5 eighths minus 5 sixteenths equals the rest. So that's what it's going to look like when you do your front view drawing. Do me a favor, take a little break. Now is a great time for you to ask questions. If you have them, go ahead, type them in the chat. And we're going to come back in just a second, and we're going to talk about our side views and our top views.